right, it's live. The Lord of the Rings game is finally here. Joined with me is Dorky Dad, and you have a dedicated Lord of the Rings Heroes Middle Earth. And we're going to talk about the top 10 tips when you start out. And we're also going to go over some of the mistakes that we made. Um, there are severe bottlenecks in this game. Like I'm personally experiencing gold and you said that you just crossed over into 40 and you're it's experience, right? So you, you do have to be focused on your characters, right? Yeah. I, I think the most important thing when you're starting off your journeys in middle earth here is going to be to have dedicated teams for your light and shadow that you just are laser focused on and any sort of deviation, especially when you start leveling characters past 30, it's going to really just hamper the rest of your progress. Okay, so the first tip is to focus on five light and five shadow, and that's gonna help you in your uh, your adventures and your daily challenges, and then also getting through the campaigns, which has three parts, but the basic, there's a light and a shadow. I'm gonna talk about what I did and what I, what I regret, uh, but I think largely you and I did the same thing. The first thing, let's talk about the light side. Uh, Strider is amazing, right? Yeah, you get him for free. You're going to get his stars passively. We'll talk about stars later. Yeah. And he's just really, really good damage. He's great damage out the, out the gate for you. Okay. And so tip number two, before we, before we, you know, the first tip is focus on five and five, right? But tip number two is do your daily challenges every single day. And that's where you're going to get five shards of him every day for free. Once you complete all your daily challenges, right? So he's a great starter character. He's got an AOE. He's got a, uh, a strong attack. He's got a leadership ability, which synergizes with hobbits, which are not that great overall, but you might need to do some of them a little bit. But Strider is uh, someone that I did then. The what's talk? I think we're in agreement on on the four, right? Because I did I did the same four that I think most people did, and this is actually my arena team as well. Uh, e Ewen and I actually like using her, her as a leader over Strider. Strider and her have leadership abilities, right? Yeah, I, I definitely prefer Eowyn, especially because the other. Uh two characters that we're about to talk about here. Yeah, and she's very good because she has a very powerful ability that is not only a cleanse, but puts on ability block, which is fantastic. And then she can also put might up, which is offense up, which is also very powerful because she does that very early. And then she actually has some defensive mechanics and she has some uh, counter attacks. It's, it's, she's just great all around character that specifically synergizes with Rohan, right? Yeah, she's a powerhouse character. When you see her on the arena, she's probably going to be the one you're trying to kill right away. And she's definitely the one the AI is trying to kill from you right away. Yeah, the, and that's the other thing too. The AI in this game does not suck for some reason or another. <laughs> I know, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, a, the AI is actually good in this game and will pick off your weak character. And you're like, why? Why? I, I, I've played Galaxy of Heroes and Marvel Strike Force a lot. And th this game actually has an AI that is actually feels like it's somewhat smart. Okay, the other two would be Ilmer, and I'm sorry if I'm butchering these names. Uh, this guy has a summon, so they're in this game, which is kind of like Galaxy of Heroes. There's uh, the board space is uh, restricted to six, uh, where like uh, Marvel Strike Force has ten, right? So uh, you can do five, and then you could summon one other. So there's a total maximum amount of space of six, and this guy can summon somebody, right? Yeah, he gets a little nerfed in some of the campaign nodes where they give you a sixth member. Right. Uh, but he's got some other great aspects. So his uh, assisting damage is huge, and he'll get a passive stack of assists on his turn. Mm -hmm. And what that does is when an, another character goes and does the basic attack, he comes in, and all of a sudden that like doubled the potency of that character's attack. So I really, really like Aomer. And you get him for free during the quests. Yep. So although he's arena farmable, you will get him for free. Yeah, so I am free to play and you've spent a little bit of money. So I'll, I'll, some of your suggestions are gonna be a little different than my suggestions, which is fine because I've not spent any money on this game. So Aomer, I guess is the correct way to say it was what I'm getting corrected right now, which is fine. Uh, and then this guy right here, Ao Aothane, if you will. Um, I don't like his, he's supposed to be a tank, but I don't feel like that's why he's good. He's good because he can do AOE and give the team counter attack. Yeah, a hundred percent. If you taunt, with, and this is a very silly thing, we were just talking about the AI. If you taunt with him, he'll take a bunch of damage because he doesn't have defense up when he does it, and then the AI kills him before he does his counter attacks. Yeah, so uh, th this is kind of a useless ability right here. And provoke is not like a taunt; it's like a three turn taunt, if you will. Like once he's hit three times, then uh, then the the taunt is gone, basically, right? And then they burst him down; he dies. I, I actually hate that ability. I don't like it at all. 
The only thing I'll say about that is if you're doing a mirror match in arena and both people have AON and some kind of big AOE damage is going to make use of AON giving offense up, using Aothane to give you guys speed bar on that special can let you go first and kind of avoid that sticky situation cases. But even if you don't do that, his basic gives defense down, which mm. you can also use to your benefit. Okay. Yeah, very good. Now, uh, lastly, I did for my fifth, which everybody says is terrible, and you can tell me why this is a terrible choice, but I did um, the healer where I'm, I'm looking for him, Pippin. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, to get through the campaigns, but I, this guy is probably not great late game, right, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, he's kind of, he seems like a necessary evil for, for to get through the campaign and then to get through some of the challenges early on. You can bypass that by picking up a Halberat offer, but I believe that's about $30 American. Um, what I would suggest for free to play players is I do think he's a necessary evil. So although I hate seeing him that high, I think that's going to be the case for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But the second you can get off and get uh, just even another damaging light character, specifically a human character, I would do that because you're going to need that for the challenges. And honestly, for the campaign, I've been going with no healer through the campaign. And just by cleverly tackling the nodes, I'm able to three star everything without too much effort. Okay. Let's go to uh, the shadow side. Uh, the three orcs, I think, are pretty much standard issue. And you're, uh, you know, so you got Ugluck, right? I think these are great, yeah. right? He's huge. So his uh, special doing the blind turn one, and he's a very fast character respective yep. to the other ones. It's it's huge. So again, in the arena, he's kind of a mainstay. He can get in there and put a blind on an enemy strider before he does his opening AOE attack. And that really neuters the enemy. Not to mention, he's just, he's a tank in his own right. He does great damage. His synergy with the other orcs we're about to talk about will get you through a lot of the campaign and a lot of the challenges. I love Ugluck. He's a mainstay on my roster. Okay, yeah, he's great. And uh, the next one is going to be the other two orcs. Uh, and like I said, we're, I'm butchering all the names. Dun Dunhar. Uh, I don't particularly like this guy that much. I mean, he's got a heal on him. And then, you know, he's got some other stuff, but he's got to uh, do a heal block. But he's okay, right? He actually scales really, really well. So that heal is one of the biggest heals in the game when he's leveled up, which is kind of bonkers. But also, if you go down to his passive, he has a really cool passive where he's giving the lowest ally defense yep, up. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and this will make it a real big headache for your uh, enemies in arena to deal with this. Say you're taunting with either Ugluck or if you get Bulg or, or Bulg's bodyguard, whatever the case may be, he's actually going to be giving them defense up, which is a way that... These, these tanks are super squishy in this game for some reason. He's one yeah. of the characters that can yeah. actually make a tank a tank. It's interesting. Yeah, it's it, the, the defense up is is well-placed, too, because it, it hits whoever's the weakest. And that's and like I said, the AI is amazing at targeting whatever one to kill you off. So it's kind of nice to have the defense up. And then the oh, yeah. other orc right here, uh, he does a lot of damage, right? Yeah, he, he does really good damage, and he's got a lot of synergy with Ugluck where they're, like, assisting off each other. Um, I've, I've had them tag team combo somebody from full life to dead. And it's, it's definitely a beautiful thing. And he's another character that you just get absolutely for free. Ugluck and Mahur are going to be the first two characters you get for the shadow section. And they're going to carry you to unlock Dunhar. So you do get this three piece right away. And it is a very strong three piece. The difference between this three piece and the whale option of Bulg and Bulg's bodyguard, who does have his own name, which is escaping me right now, mm -hmm. seems very minimal. Yeah, honestly, it seems like these Isengard orcs are really, really, really good. Right. And I kind of have been holding off on my other two. Those, I, you know, I, I, I want to say don't do G Grimpa. We'll talk about that in a minute when we get to the, the Cantina nodes. Uh, you have recommend also Nuraz, who I have not fully upgraded. Uh, he's also needed for one of the, the missions too, the daily missions. Yeah, so Nuraz I like because he, he does an AoE defense up on his special, which is nice. And then he's going to summon in a big troll brute who can uh, soak up some attacks. He's got a stun on his second turn. The problem with Nuraz is he is very, very squishy. So he becomes a liability in that sense to three star nodes. Uh, but if he can reach his ultimate and he gets that summon off, you're going to be in a really, really good position. So a tank mixed with Nuraz and the healer for the shadow section is is really powerful combo. Okay, and then lastly, uh, Ironhide. And so we're going to talk about, let's talk about, there's going to be this massive gold crunch. And one of the things that um, there's like in the guild campaign, so when you join a guild, you have access to the guild campaign. Uh, and there's like, right now I can access three, but 
there's a little bit of gold in chapter one, a little bit more gold in chapter two, and a little bit gold in chapter three. Uh, but the thing is, is that I went into chapter two because I knew there was going to be a gold problem and I followed Grimpa, uh, and that was a big waste. I should have been just sticking in the first, first wave and farming Ironhide because he's amazing in the arena, right? Yeah, it's really unfortunate. So not only are you giving up gold, but you're also giving up additional of those training uh, ability materials. Mm -hmm. And if you're only coring for the, the regular energy and not the more expensive campaign energy, they they become very very rare but i do think your suggestion here is good you want to get iron hide unlocked and if you go over to the first node you might even want to farm up a little bit extra stars on your ug luck maybe to two maybe to three just because it's really fast to get them there mm -hmm. i like well, well we'll talk about progression stuff a little bit i'll touch on that then okay yeah so there there's more gold as you get down so guild campaign you want to go as you know once you get done with iron hide you know probably want to move on to chapter three. So gold is going to be very important in the cantina and then farming iron hide. And then he's amazing in the arena. He's got AOE and he's just quite good. Okay. So what do we got? Uh, let's talk about gold and uh, the scarcity of gold and where to spend your gold. I've found that uh, the stars don't seem to like you do character stars doesn't give a lot of stats and it kind of feels bad. Yeah. So that's what I was just about to touch on. So the stars seem to be the least impactful upgrades. And if you just want the numbers behind it, it seems like upgrading from one to two gives about 4%, two to three, about 4%, three to four, 4%. So it's like a, a linear upgrade until you get to seven star. Then you get a big, I think it's about 8% jump in stats. Okay. But gold to level it, if you're familiar with Marvel Strike Force, is the same thing. So it's like 19,000 to go from one to two. Uh, I don't know, two to three. 80,000 to go from three to four, 150 to go to four to four to five. And so that that amount of gold isn't worth it because that 4% is nowhere near the amount of uh, stat increases you're getting from leveling your characters or from attaching gear. And because it drains your gold so much to do it, it becomes so much like just the value in it drops and drops and drops. Right. I think everyone like bring them up to three stars and probably just chill there. Okay, so what I what happened is not only did I go heavy on Grimpa, I put a, I took him to four stars, did not get iron hired, wasted a lot of time, and wasted a lot of gold. Bad news, right. bad bad news altogether. And then you're when you hit like in the mid thirties, you're just out of gold, and there's no more gold. And uh, I think I think the the order is like leveling up characters seems to be a good use of gold. Uh, then gear tiers and then ability materials and then character stars. So that's uh, very important now So we talked about six of the things the six tips next two tips are going to be based on What to spend power cores and I feel like this is a no-brainer, but uh, you've got to spend your 50s on the campaign energy and and uh, Like this right here the 527 energy is what I did right now by refreshed the 50s. What are you spending on your gold? Uh, what are you spending your power cores, crystals, whatever you want to call it in uh, this game? What are you spending it on? All right, so to put this into perspective, I dropped $200 on power cores. I've been doing the 50s on the light and shadow. I've been doing the hundreds on the light and shadow. And I've been doing the hundreds and the 200s on the guild campaign as okay. well. I'm down to a thousand cores. Okay, so it's not sustainable at all. The amount of cores you get in this game is nowhere near some of the other hero collectors. So what you're saying right now, 100% dead on. Yeah. For a realistic perspective, you just want to do your 50 core refreshes on light and shadow, and that's it. Yep. It's going to be a slow grind, but let me tell you, even dropping these $200, I I have not felt some kind of exponential increase. I'm looking at where you're at right now. I'm five levels ahead of you, and I'm. I'm yeah, three hundred and twenty bucks down Canadian. Yeah, you 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 don't get a lot in this game by spending. Has been my experience. I mean, they've got a hundred dollar offer on day one. You know what I mean? All right, and then there's something that's different than Marvel Strike Force is the way that the arena works. You get five attacks a day, and then only when if you can you know so you do your match and then you have to wait fifteen minutes, right? And then you could spend yeah. fifty crystals to speed that up, but don't do that. Once you're no, out of it, yeah, don't do that. When you're out of five attacks and you have zero attacks left, you can spend 50 crystals or cores, whatever we're going to call them in this game, uh, and then you get five more attacks. That's a pretty good thing. Tell us why that's a good thing. 
Well, it's a good thing, especially on launch. As soon as you hit yeah. level 20, that's when you open up the arena and that's when it is go time. So in the first day, you want to climb as high as possible you can as you can in the arena. Hopefully on this first day, everyone's getting thrown into a new shard, not the shard that me and Mr. Mobile Gamer here are in. Oh my God. This is a deep, deep uh, shark infested waters. You want to climb as high as possible because as you saw with mobile there, he's getting about 50 cores per day, which is not a lot. And I think you get like 50 or maybe 100 from the dailies. I'm at like the top 30 and I'm still only getting 240 a day. So you want to climb as fast as possible because getting those those extra gems or power cores, whatever the case may be, it's going to be very uh, influential on how fast you're leveling. Leveling does seem to be uh, the big thing to do right now in the opening of this game. Okay. And then let's talk. We're going to talk about two more things. That was tip number eight. Tip number nine is going to max the challenges every day. And uh, I mean, I think this is pretty obvious, but uh, I would I would actually uh, when I was doing these, like if I knew I was going to go up a tier or be, have access to another tier, uh, I was actually kind of stalling a little bit every day. So I did towards the end because you want to be able to get as high as possible on these every day, right? Yeah, absolutely. You you want to be pushing the highest tier your account level will let you do. You want to three star as much as possible. Like right there, you got to push that shadow, that tier three, because that experience, that bottleneck is going to catch you in a couple levels at level 40, especially because you've leveled a couple characters that you are not too into. Yeah, so I've got to work on the shadow. So that's, that's going to be my goal for today is to upgrade my shadow as much as possible so I can three star this in the next tier. And then lastly, Let's go over the, the supplies and what to buy in the stores because that's going to be a lot of questions right behind me. There's a supplies button uh, right here. This is random right here, or it looks like this has a high assortment, right? Is there anything you would suggest in this store right here? Uh, well, there's only three characters that are going to appear. Well, there you go. Just, just refresh that. Your... Yeah, right there. <laughs> there's only these three characters that are going to appear in this store. I would take Aylmer up to three stars because we are suggesting him as the, one of the light campaign characters, like one of the mainstays. I would bring him up to three stars, which is what your that 55 would be. And then I would unlock Shagrat. The goblins, man, they were so good. So, so good in the beta. And now people have got them unlocked and they are very underwhelming. They're getting absolutely just one shot by a bunch of different characters. So I would avoid gold, gold burns as much as possible. Okay, next door right here. We've got Bolg and Halberad. And I've seen, I see Halberad a lot in the arena. A lot of people have gone there, but you're saying Bolg is the way to go. Well, the reason I would like Bulb better is because he is an orc and we have many more human options than we do orc in the early games. Uh, and I just Bulb hits like a truck. So I understand the appeal behind Halberad, but since I adopted the full Rohan team, which we, we suggested three of those Rohan members, and then I sub in Ironhide and I don't care about Halberad in the arena. I completely ignore him. I don't care about that little pitiful heal he does. I don't know when he hits level 60 and gets a bunch of different ability levels on there, if that's going to change. But in the early game right now, very, very underwhelming. And even in the light campaign, that heal he does. Yes, you can. If you buy his offer, he can replace Pippin for you. But as you've been playing for what? Two weeks now, right? And you yeah. have him at 20 out of 45. It's, it's slow. Yeah, it's super slow. Yeah. yeah. This is a very rare resource that you basically only get from the challenges, in my understanding. So getting him unlocked that way, you're probably going to be all the way through the light campaign by by the time you do that. And then you'll have access to the elf herbalist healer anyway. I just I'm not super on the Halbred train. I know a lot of people are. I hunt teams with, that have him in the arena because I don't find him very impactful there. OK, and then the la the guild store, what do you got there? So we got to give a shout out to Ton on this one. He's already doing his data mines for Lord of the Rings, and he has data mined that the Herodim Tag is going to be used to knock the first legendary, which is going to be the Witch King. And that is the gentleman with the face paint there. So I don't know what that's going to mean. Legendaries. Do we need them at a certain star level? Do we need them at a certain power level? We don't like, know. Level yeah. level? We don't know. Yeah. Who knows? But I am putting all my uh, credits into that guy for now. I have unlocked Miri. I leveled her up. I tried her with Strider and Halberad at pretty high levels. It's good damage. Uh, I don't think it's enough to to say do that instead of doing the Rohan team that we were talking about earlier. I just, the difference is not uh, substantial enough. Okay, well, there are your top 10 heroes. If you're just getting top 10 uh, tips, beginner tips, if you're just getting started at Lord of the Rings, be sure to head over to Dorky Dad's channel. You've got a bunch of videos over there. Anything you want to say before we go? 
Nope, just can't wait to play with you guys in Middle Earth. The game seems very fun. It's definitely in its infancy. Be ready to uh, experience something different if you've been playing Marvel Strike Force. There's many modes in Marvel Strike Force. It's very fast paced. This is going to be a new game. It's going to get there. Enjoy the ride. Yeah, it's it's a, it's something to do, <laughs> right? That doesn't say a lot, yeah. I suppose. It's something to do, <laughs> uh, especially if you don't mind the graphics. All right, bye for now. Yeah, mobile game.